So we take the geishas. These are the two children, four and five, when they went into the theater. And one of the first plays, not the first, one of the first, was her first false step. And I played a child that was thrown into the lion's den. <laughs> then, by the time we were 12 and 13, we were too awkward for children, and we went into the films. And these are pictures by the hundreds of the early films. You see photography here that was just as was. They were worked out in the daylight, and they took the pictures without any help of electricity. And uh, there, all the different periods, cowboys one week, playing nuns the next. And also fashion, if you notice, the different fashions. And here's Dorothy, all dressed up like a pirate. Look at the different fashions. Uh, uh, this is a vamp that I'm playing. Everybody wanted to play vamps at that time because they were easier than those good little girls that were so difficult to hold the interest of the audience. Well, you and your sister lived together for many years, did you not? Oh, we lived together on and off all our lives, uh, naturally with Mother, who was an invalid, invalid for 25 years. We uh, lived with a trained nurse in the house. We were sent up front in France to make a film for the three films for the British and French governments to make up their minds to go to war for them, uh, the First World War. And Mother wouldn't let us go without her, so she got shell shot, and it affected in her entire life. She said if one was going to be killed, we were all going. This is Georgia Eliot's Romola that we made in Florence, Italy, and Dorothy played Tessa. In it, she's, she drowns. Well, we tried to drown her in that dirty Arno, but we didn't succeed because she was like a cork. We'd pu push her down in the back, she'd pop up in the front, push her down the front, she'd pop up in the back. So we got back to America. Still, this film was ready for release and Dorothy hadn't been drowned. And she had a terrible cold and it was October and we, I waited for the cold to get over. It didn't. By the 1st of November, I said, Dorothy, we've got to do it. It's going to be too cold. And we went up to Mr. Griffith's studio in Mamaroneck, New York, right on the Sound. And I, we got an expert swimmer that would go under and pull her up and down. And she had never had any alcohol, hated it, wouldn't take it. And we held her nose and made her take some whiskey before we drowned her in the ice cold water. He pulled her down. She, when we took her out, we wrapped her up and made her run up and down. And you know it cured the cold. <laughs> <laughs> when did you come into the Tokies? Uh, 1929, I think in the Swan, Molnar's play. And of course, I'd come from the theater and I'd been studying a voice all the time. I had been in pictures. And they said, oh, you're so lucky. You can go right into films and have a great career. We'll remake all your pictures. <laughs> can you imagine anything worse than to remake everything you had done? The very best you knew how to go back and try it again. Dorothy had already made the uh, transition. She was back in the theater in Young Love, and I went back uh, in Uncle Vanya for the uh, young boy wonder of the theater at that time, Jed Harris. And I just closed in Uncle Vanya with the boy wonder Mike Nichols in New York uh, the, in August. Tell me about your academy night a little bit. Well, that was an exciting night. I'd never seen an Academy uh, show. I'd never been there. I never lived in Hollywood. I always lived in New York, Dorothy and I, from four, four and five. And uh, they asked me to come out. Naturally, I was delighted. I thought I was dead and had gone to heaven, you know. It was like an obituary. It was so beautiful. And, and then when I looked out, the audience stood up in a, my speech I'd learned so carefully. Every word left my mind. And I said something, I said this, it makes sense, but where the words came from, I don't know. How do you feel about the young people that are trying to make films today? Let me go back to some of these pictures of the early films. What is the difference in the way they were? In the way oh, I think the young people are wonderful. We've gone across the country ten times now to the colleges. And I connect with them faster, it seems, than I do with my own generation. They, they have such enthusiasm for these uh, early films. They rediscovered them, you see. And um, I find now my fans are between 11 and 20. Uh, the children, their parents buy these pictures that you can buy in 8 or 16 millimeter. 
and run them at home to wean their children from the violence of television and the violence of films of today. They want them to see gentler stories. Now, we had drama and we had violence, but it wasn't accentuated or made attractive as it is today, I think. The bad never won out over the good because Griffith knew the power of film and took the responsibility of what he said and did with that power. And that's what I try to uh, give to the young people, to try and make them see that whatever the world is now, the films are greatly responsible for it. And that's the little screen and the big screen. And so that when they start making pictures, they will take this responsibility and see to it that what they say will influence their young people, which they'll be having at that time, in the proper way. Why don't you begin and tell me about the party? And settled in Lancaster County. Their main claim to fame was the Reverend Benjamin Gish and the Reverend Jacob Eisenhower, David, or Dwight David's grandfather, went west together to Abilene, Kansas. Now, on my mother's side, I guess the most illustrious ancestor was Zachary Taylor, who was known uh, as Old Rough and Ready. He was one of our presidents. And these are all, you know, the pictures of them. And, and just this winter, we had a lady from, a letter from a lady who was in, uh, her mother was in this play, and she was carrying her at the time. So she grew up on stories of the little Gish girls in Teddy and Jenny, our two lions. And she sent me that picture of Teddy. <laughs> and the, uh, Dorothy was the child the next year thrown in. And then the third year, they went back to the circus. Jenny tore the arm off her trainer. And I think the reason was that the first year she had a baby and we were allowed to play with the baby for the first month or five weeks. Then it was sent ahead of the show to advertise it. And I think Jenny remembered that and got even with the trainer for taking her baby away. Else why would she? And I dressed up by uh, the couturier of that day was Madame Frances. She made this costume. She became Mrs. Nate Steengold, a lady that was whose husband had great power at, in the films later on. And I think she'll be coming out with the book soon. And then, and here's a picture of the, um, no, that's the first Vanya. Now, Dorothy also played uh, in the Gorgoyle play for uh, Jed Harris the Inspector General. She had a long and distinguished career in the theater. Uh, here is the original Uncle Vanya. There's Jed Harris, the man who everything he touched turned into a success for so many years. And there's a Life with Father. We both played that. Uh, Dorothy played Vinnie for two and a half years, and I played it for a year and a half in Chicago. And as we were signing for it, the author said, don't sign for a run of the play contract. We've got a play for the two of you. And Dorothy said, could we read it? No. What is its comedy? What's it about? Murder and insanity. She said, a comedy? And we signed for life with father. Turned out to be arsenic and old lace. <laughs> but you never played arsenic and old lace. No, they changed it somewhat. Now, there's a Steichen picture. So this is a book on photography. There is John Engsted with my favorite person, Malcolm, my little West Highland Terrier. We lived together 16 years, oh, so happily. I went to retrieve the ball. I jumped through the hoops. He told me what to do, and I did it with such happiness. And here's the last Uncle Vanya. There's Mike Nichols, who directed it. He'll soon have his uh, film the Day of the Dolphins ready with George Scott. Here he is playing um, Ashroff. Uh, Nicole Williamson was playing Vanya. Jury Christie played my part. And Elizabeth Wilson, Sonia, Kathleen Nesbitt, the mother, and um, Sonia's um, father, Bernard Hughes, and Conrad Bain, who's in Maud, played Waffles. Mr. Dunlap directed those shows. He directed 13 of them, and he handled it beautifully, and Mr. Spiegel Gass wrote a, oh, such a touching story about me. I, and Mr. Uh, here he is. Where is uh, uh, Mr. Malcolm? Uh, uh, here. 
uh, Melvin Douglas. He delivered it so beautifully. Cut from it. <laughs> Elliot's Romola that we... And then from that, she went over to England to make pictures for Herbert Wilcox. And her first film, Nell Gwynn, as we show here with the English press saying it, I don't say it, she got the first world market for English pictures. Up until then, they only had England to play to, or with us if we'd buy one of their films, but they didn't have a world market for all their films. 